Hi everyone, this is Ripper of Ripper Gaming, and today I'm going to be checking out a new docking station by JSOX. Now, um, I have tried several other stations before, even before I really had a channel, um, and uh, they've always been pretty good from uh, my experience, but this one has a few things that I really want to try out. So, the first is that this does HDMI 4K at 120 Hz. That means it supports HDMI 2.1. And uh, while my setup here doesn't seem to work with that because it's a 1080p screen, I do have a 4K setup on my other desk that I will show you as part of this video. Uh, the other nice thing is that it has variable refresh rate and 100 watt fast charge. It means it should handle everything if you're into handhelds like we do a lot of uh, tinkering with on this channel. So um, we'll just go ahead and start by checking it out. I haven't opened this yet, so not sure if I can just push that out or if this pops right off. Yeah, it looks like right here. All right, we'll open this up. All right. Okay, so this is not a docked type station. Um, it is RGB, so it's got a lot of lights on it. Um, got a push here. I'm guessing that's some type of power. Um, on the back you can see, see if I can get some good focus here, it shows us the uh, connect to host, laptop charging, USB-C, HDMI, and then you've got your power coming in there. Uh, so we're going to peel this off. So it is nice. We don't have a, um, I don't see, yeah, display port, but since it's got HDMI 2.1, that's how it's going to handle it. So, this feels pretty solid. This is a little weird. Okay, there we go. I see now. That's nice. Okay, so this is essentially just, it'll stay in there, but this is to hold your handheld. So, we'll try it out with my different handhelds. We'll try it out with the case on, that kind of stuff. So, that's kind of cool. That's nice. Uh, that's one of the things that lacks uh, a lot of the good docks. Um, don't have uh, uh, the ability to hold your handheld. So, let's see here. Little USB C cable, got some warranty cards, instructions, that kind of thing. These are usually pretty straightforward, so we're gonna put the rest of this back in the box and we'll put this stuff over to the side. Uh, some of these cables and stuff for later. I do have some additional things that they sent uh, as well that we want to check out. So we've got this box here. Um, you know, when you get it shipped overseas, it can get beat up sometimes, but cables should be fine. So let's get into this box. This should be a 100 watt uh, cable for it. I already have some of these, but definitely good to have official ones. Uh, make sure that there's no compatibility issues. I will try it with some other cables too, just to make sure I'm getting full power. So these are some nice cables here. Got a couple of... Uh, um, cable ties there so that's nice um, and then these cables are braided they feel pretty sturdy and there's a couple of them so that's pretty nice uh, to use with that dock so we'll put those over to the side and then we've got a little pack of connectors here which looks like uh, USB A to USB C Pretty much the same thing so if we have anything that uh, doesn't work with the ports or if we have extra uh, as you can see here we've got a couple USB A's if we have other USB C devices we can plug them in I assume that if you want full power you're gonna go through um, probably this host connector here um, but that's handy for other devices such as USB sticks if you're trying to load Windows so we're going to start off here by seeing how these fit. I'm going to take all these nice accessories and kind of put them to the side. And uh, we're just going to pull that out. Now let's, let's kind of try that sitting down. Maybe it's easier. Okay. Yeah, that comes out. Obviously, fingernails make that easier. So, um, the Ally is probably my favorite handheld. It does have this case by JSOX on it. So, we're going to start by trying that in here. And... Uh, it fits, but uh, let me kind of turn this to the side so you can kind of see my only concern. 
yeah, obviously the weight of that is pulling it forward. So while it does fit, um, could be a little problematic. There's some grips on the bottom here, but they're not gonna handle the weight there. So now once you have some cables in it, especially if you have like a thick cable like your HDMI, it might not be a problem, but just keep that in mind if you have it on the edge of something. I wouldn't want that to fall over and hurt your device. I mean, yeah, it's possible. You can see it could kind of flip over right there. So something to keep in mind, you want to be safe with it there. So the next one we're going to try is our Legion Go here. See how that fits in there? And that one kind of leans back more. So not as, I mean, obviously you can still do it if you push, but um, not as likely. Um, just because it leans further back because of the space. I don't have a case on this one. Um, you know, I'll probably try one eventually. But, yeah. So you're going to have the same issue there. Um, I wonder if there's any type of way to stabilize that. Nice idea, but uh, yeah, be careful if you do end up using that. So then we've got our Steam Deck here that I'm going to try. And the Steam Deck's pretty um thin and light so it's kind of in the same boat as the legion go where it can tip uh, but it's leaning back and i actually have a steam deck i'll grab real quick that has a full case on it so we'll see how that one fits in there okay and this is the original steam deck of mine uh it's got the uh g-brand case now that you can kind of do it like that if you pop the back open here. Or of course on these they flip off there. So this will work, but it doesn't sit in there quite as well as the others. It's easy to tip there. So um, it works well with all of them really, except for the um, Steam Deck with the D-Brand case here. So something to keep in mind if that's what you're buying it for. It'll sit there. I mean, if you just plug it in and use it, you're probably fine. Uh, but if you're trying to, say, plug it in and use it like this, then you're still pretty stable. It's only if you were to pull forward, you know, you pull your hand back and you see that kind of flops there. So obviously, you know, be careful there if you end up using this. Now, of course, you don't have to use that at all. If you just want to dock and you've got a case, that has a, um, a kickstand on it here. I'm trying to get this on. I always go the wrong way. Flip it around here so it's a little easier. There we go. So you could always just use it like this and of course have your dock there. So let me move that out of the way. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and hook this up with some of the devices I have. So I've got a keyboard, mouse, we're going to try one of their new cables for power delivery um, and that's going to be running over to uh, actually have an uh, anchor 100 watt brick that I use most of the time. plugged into that brick, bring it over here, and that would go into our power delivery. There we go, we've got our nice RGB. Now, I haven't looked through these instructions, obviously I've just opened this, but I'm not sure if there's a way to control what the RGB looks like. Um, my guess is no, there's no real buttons that look to control it. Um, I think it's just kind of a cool feature to have a nice little light there. Uh, so we'll get that plugged in. I'm going to hook up HDMI. Now this is 1080. I'll test it a little bit later in this video with a 4K display. Um, and then we've got this host one here, uh, which we can use. So you see, obviously, the more cables you hook up, uh, the more it might hold that down. So this might become less of an issue once you've got things kind of held down with cables. So anyway, something to consider. 
The way this one's set up, I would probably keep it hooked up all the time and then use this tray if needed. Um, but for something like the Legion Go, I've already got a kickstand on it. Um, something like my uh, Steam Deck OLED, I would probably put in there just because I don't have a kickstand for it. Um, and if I'm just gonna use it, it's pretty easy to hook up here. Now, um, we're gonna go ahead and try this other cable that came with it. I don't really need that long cable just to hook up the device. Now, the nice thing here is a lot of these docks have a small cable with a little crook in it to be able to hook up. And this cable's long enough that you should easily be able to hook up any of your devices, as you can see here. So, we're gonna start with the Steam Deck. Turn that one on here and we're going to plug in and see if we get anything showing up on our monitor. Okay, I'm going to adjust this just a little bit. Sorry, thumb in the way there. So the lights are on the corners, you know, I've got this extra lighting, but looks like it works just fine. Um, this is 1080p. I don't see any issues with it. Uh, let's go ahead and go down to settings. Display. Automatically set the resolution. No issues. This kind of worked pretty easily. So that's definitely a, definitely a plus. Looks good. No issues with it. Uh, I have used a lot of docks and uh, they're not always the easiest. So, okay. We've tried it with our Steam Deck and uh, seems to work fine there. That's with the OLED. Um, I'm gonna give it a try with the Legion. So we've got this one going. I don't know if that's gonna have to boot into Windows, so we'll give that a second. And then I'm gonna get the Ally booted up also. Okay, it looks like Ally is ready to go. Okay, so we've got the Ally here. Uh, I'm actually going to stick it in the, uh, this one actually seems to fit, I've got the JSOX case, but it seems to fit really well there. You can kind of see that. Now obviously the wobble is a little bit better when I've got all these cables hooked up here. I'm also going to get this uh, Legion Go logged in as well. So we've got that there, we've got this one, we're going to go ahead and plug in and then go straight up to the screen here. Look how long this takes. The other one took just a moment. That actually worked very quickly. So no issues there. I'll tell you what, let me actually try the mouse and everything, make sure we don't have any issues there. Yeah, that seems to be pretty smooth. Um, let's see here. We're gonna check out the display settings and see what type of it looks like we've got 120 hertz. That is the native display. And then it looks like on this display too, which is an older Dell I have, is 120 hertz. And it'll actually go up to 144, which is what this display panel is rated for. So, looks like that works fairly well. Yeah, I gotta say, that's, um, if you haven't messed with a lot of these, a lot of them give you issues. You have to plug and unplug and plug and unplug. Um, so that's two devices in a row where it just plugged in and worked. Let me grab my keyboard too. Sometimes I have trouble, uh, troubles with keyboards and they will act up. So let me show you down there. I've got this keyboard going and I haven't touched it yet. Let me see if it picks up. Look at that. It picks up immediately. Um, yeah, I'm... I'm obviously gonna do a lot more testing with this, but I mean, just being honest with you, even some of the JSOX docs that I've used have some issues sometimes with having to plug and unplug and replug that kind of thing. Uh, this one is seeming to work very well, kind of right out of the box, that's good news. All right, we're gonna unplug and uh, we're gonna switch over to our Legion and put it in here too. Let's get that back a little. Sit that in, it's a little bit more loose. Now, honestly, you could probably make that fit by pulling this kickstand out slightly a bit, just a little bit, and kind of wedge it in there. So we're gonna plug this one in, 
and then go up to the screen, see how long it takes. Now this one's a little bit different because it runs a different resolution. So you see the black bars on the side. So um, that's one of the few negatives uh, about the Legion Go, in my opinion, is that you know it doesn't run like a 1080 native. It's a, um, here, I'll just go ahead and bring it up and show you the different resolutions. So you can see down here it's 1280 by 800, 1920, or by 1200, and 2560 by 1600. Now, um, these are not going to fit this screen. In fact, um, it really is having an issue switching over there. So let's see if I can switch to 1200. See if that makes any difference. And then 1280. So I probably am going to need to set the resolution on this one to make it work well. So I can see, you see that one sideways, but down here because this is a uh, portrait panel is why it's doing that. Um, so let me go ahead and go down here and instead of duplicating the displays, I really just need to either extend these displays or show only on two. Because uh, here we'll identify, but two should be, um, here, I'll extend. Keep the changes and then identify. So yeah, that panel up there is technically two. So if we take that one and we change it from portrait to landscape, then it looks correct. So when we're doing this, we're essentially running two different resolutions. We've got a resolution down there, and then we've got the resolution up here. So on the Legion Go, uh, because it's not the same type of resolution, this first one, which is kind of funny, um, let me bring this up here just so you all can see. This first panel looks like the larger one, but really that's just because of the resolution. So that's actually the 2560 by 1600, and uh, that is the actual Legion Go. Um, whereas this panel is the bigger panel you're looking at. This is a 1080p panel. Now I can make that my main display and, and use it if, if you want to use it docked. Uh, I'd probably recommend doing that. And then everything will kind of be on here so you use this. If you're using this as a, like a desktop replacement or you're using it for work, that kind of thing, uh, then yeah, you'll want to extend your display and make the secondary display your main display. So if we go down here, you see it's 1920 by 1080. We'll check the advanced settings here. It looks like it does handle 144 hertz as well. So um, should be no problem if you want to use that. And then the Go display is at 144 hertz. Um, of course it handles 120, 140, whatever is available. Um, but obviously I would normally go for the highest. So um, uh, as far as the dock is concerned, it seems to work really well. I mean, obviously a little bit more configuration with the uh, Legion. Uh, and that's just due to the panel um, display and the fact that it's a uh, uh, different non-standard resolution. Um, but the, uh, the Steam Deck does auto adjust to it uh, for a 1080, uh, so, so that's nice. But this is just a, a issue of Windows. It has nothing to do with the Legion Go or to do with the dock. Um, but overall, I'm very impressed so far with this dock. It's done very well um, for all three of these devices. Uh, so uh, I'm going to cut the video here. And then I'll pick back up. Um, I've got a 48 inch OLED display that I use and I, I nor normally use it 4K 120. So we'll try these out at 4K 120 and see how the dock handles it. Um, and I do have one other dock that does that and it doesn't do it that great. Uh, so this will kind of be the true test to see how well this handles it. Be back in a little bit. All right, folks, so I've switched over to my other desk because I do have a 4K 120 display here and I wanted to show you this dock with it. Um, I've already tested this, and to be honest with you, I'm actually fairly impressed by it. So we're gonna take our ROG Ally, and uh, you can see we've got our cable here. We're gonna go ahead and plug this in, and give that a second, and you can see it's popping up here. I'm gonna adjust the camera a little bit so we can focus more on this display. Um, not the best lighting, but I've got um, on my RGB here, so I'm not sure how much everything is going to pick up. So let's see here. If we go and look at our settings on our display, we've got our display here. You can see it's 3840 by 2160. Um, hopefully you can see that. 
Uh, and then if we go to our advanced display, you can see it's set to 120 hertz here. So this is actually uh, um, doing pretty good. Um, there's not many docks I could handle 4K 120. So I'm going to go ahead and say this might be the best dock I've seen, uh, especially if you're trying to uh, work in 4K 120. Now, um, gaming on a raw gala at 4K is not something that's probably recommended, uh, but we're going to try it anyway. So we're going to play some Diablo 4 and just bring it up on the screen and see how well it works. Okay, okay so this is one of my characters here. I'll go ahead and show you. Um, I had to take the settings here. You can see it's 3840 by 2160. Uh, we're playing on the AMD Radeon graphics in full screen. Um, I did turn HDR on, so I'm doing 4K 120 and HDR. Uh, I've got it set to FSR 2 with Ultra Performance. It says custom, but I basically set it to low um, because I don't think it's going to handle anything really higher than that. So we're going to go ahead and close out of this and I'm going to start the game on my Seasonal Rogue. I will say that it's not the best experience but I'm actually surprised at how well it plays considering we're playing at 4K on an integrated APU um, instead of having a discrete graphics card. So th this is pretty impressive I'd still say uh, considering the resolution we're playing at. So I'm going to show you that I've got this kind of up top here. I'm not sure how well you'd be able to see it from the angle, uh, but you can see it's a little laggy and uh, maybe you can see the FPS down here better, but it's showing 42, 40 to 42 around there um, in both my uh, uh, FPS gauges here. So, I mean, you'll see some lag as you play it, uh, but really, I mean, considering the fact that this is, you know, 4K on this device, this is pr pretty crazy here. Um, so definitely playable, just not the best experience. But um, if you really want to play a 4K, um, Diablo 2 does not play great even on my 3080. Uh, or not Diablo 2, Diablo 4, sorry. So um, so yeah, this is, is a good option. And especially if you want to play um, on a desktop. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, that's, that's nice being able to use it instead of just the handheld to be able to use it as a work computer. Um, or to be able to use it, uh, you know, all the way up to 4K. Now, I'd still probably recommend playing at 1080p on uh, the dock, but uh, this is really impressive performance. And there's one other dock I've gotten to play at 4K 120, um, and I've kind of got it in my queue to line up to, to do a um, review of, but I'll say this one's better. It, it connects quickly. I don't really have any issues. I've tried connecting this. Um, I'll even uh, I'll switch out my uh, ally for the um, Steam Deck here. So give me just a second. Let me quit this game. So I'll go back down here to the ally, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and unplug that. Put that over to the side, and this is the Steam Deck OLED. So we're going to hook that one up. And we're going to plug it in. And uh, you'll see that it doesn't take it too long. Uh, and then it shows up as well. So yeah, you can see it's already now up on the 4K 120 screen. Now, I haven't tried to see if this one actually handles 4K 120. Um, it does not feel like 120 just from uh, trying it right now. But yeah, let's look at our settings and our display. So it looks like it does actually go up to 4K 120 here. So I'm going to keep these settings. So that's pretty crazy, um, even on a Steam Deck. Now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you it's probably going to play pretty horribly. Um, but the fact that you can do it if you want to, it's pretty cool. And you might actually be able to play some of these easier um, games that don't like Nordic Ashes is one of my favorites, Crafty Survivors, these are some fun games. Uh, but they don't take a lot of processing power. So you might actually be able to get some gameplay out of those on a 4K uh, display. Um, but like I said, overall, regardless of your handheld, you're probably going to try and stick to 1080 um, just to uh, not try and push the card in it too much. But um, pretty impressive uh, for a dock. So 
This honestly is going to be my number one pick for a dock. So uh, that's uh, that's saying something because I've got a lot of different docks I've tried. So anyway, you all should check it out. Um, I'll put a link to it on the JSOX website. Um, but it's, it's definitely a pretty cool dock. And if you don't like the RGB, um, there might be a way to turn it off. I have not looked into that yet. Um, but honestly, when you have something kind of sitting on it there, you don't notice the RGB all too much. It's not so bright that it would keep you awake if you had your set up in your uh, bedroom. So anyway, thanks for checking it out. Um, I definitely recommend this dock. And uh, um, subscribe and check out some of my other videos. Thanks all.